Today's message is called Living in the Finished Reality of Salvation. We must be taught what the resurrection of Jesus Christ means for our faith. Unless you understand this, your faith will never reach the level where you are reigning in life, reigning over your circumstances, powerful, bold, confident faith. God wants you to have faith. God wants you to be victorious in your faith. How? We must live in the finished reality of redemption. See, three days before the resurrection, Jesus shouted in victory and triumph on the cross just before He died. He shouted, it is finished. Hallelujah. And when Jesus said, it is finished, He meant this. That all the law has been fulfilled Every prophecy declared about him has been fulfilled. All the will of God has been accomplished. And all that is required for salvation and redemption is achieved by him. Every foe, every enemy has been defeated. That's what Jesus means. So when Jesus says, it is finished, what he's saying is, I have completed the work of salvation and redemption. It is done. That's what he's saying. The resurrection is God's amen to Jesus' it is finished. When Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished, the Father from heaven said, amen. Hallelujah. See, the resurrection is a sign that Jesus' work is fully accepted by God. It means that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is perfectly perfected. For eternity so that the father is completely satisfied his justice is satisfied his wrath has been satiated he is pleased and that's why Jesus was raised from the dead when we look at the cross we see the work of redemption completed when we look at the empty tomb what do we see we see the full acceptance of Jesus' work by the Father. The main question is, as far as we are concerned, Christians, do we live in the finished reality of salvation? Do we live in this belief that it is finished? This is the difference between a faith that is weak, always begging God to do something, always pleading God to do something for them or a faith that lives with bold faith, confident faith that God has done everything He needs to do for my salvation and all that is required for my part is to believe and to receive. Joshua chapter 6 verses 2 and 3. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given, past tense, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march. In other words, this is your part. This is what you need to do. Around the city, all you men of war, you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Even before Joshua and the Israelites possessed Jericho, God said, I have already given you the city. That means as far as God was concerned, in his mind, in his perspective, Jericho was already belonging to Joshua and Israel even though they had not conquered the city yet. So there is God's part and there is man's part. God's part was Jesus dying on the cross and Jesus saying, it is finished. He's done it. He's not going to go back on the cross again. Man's part is to believe in that. Can you say amen? See, most Christians believe that God can do anything. How many of you believe that? Can I see your hands? Yes, all of us. But they also believe that God will not do anything for them unless they impress God with lots of prayers, lots of fasting, lots of giving, and lots of sacrifice. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8. I want you to see this again. I have given, it's a done work. I have given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land the Lord swore He would give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to the descendants after them. We see this principle throughout Scripture. 
God's part is to give and God already gave them. Even before they entered the land, God says, I've already given it to you. It's yours. It's a birthright. It's my promise to you. It's yours. Now go in and possess it. This is where our faith must be based on when it comes to the cross. Because as far as the Bible is concerned, God has already done everything that is required for our salvation. God's already done. He's already done it. The word salvation is the Greek word soteria. All right? And it occurs 45 times in the Bible. And it is an all-inclusive word signifying forgiveness, healing, prosperity, deliverance, rescue, liberation, and restoration. Christ's salvation is total in scope for the total man, spirit, soul, and body. So salvation does not mean only that if you die, you will go to heaven, but your life here on the earth is miserable. You will always be, you know, facing your enemies, sickness, pain, and so on. You'll be defeated. But hold on. Don't give up because Jesus is coming back. That's what we think about salvation. But salvation is a complete package of God's blessings and benefits and inheritance in Christ, which is guaranteed to us by the finished work of Jesus. By salvation. And as far as God is concerned, salvation is already given to us. Just like he told Israelites, I've already given you the land. Now go and take it. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything that you need to live a godly life powerful life has already been given in salvation. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says, Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us, past tense, blessed us, past tense, with every, everyone say every, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. As far as God is concerned, it is done. Now, the word done is the foundation stone upon which a bold faith must arise. Let me give you a few more scriptures so that it establishes this belief in your heart. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. In Him we have redemption through His blood. We have, we have, we have. The Bible says we have. The Bible is your constitutional right. The Bible, the epistle lists our constitutional rights in the kingdom of God. The Bible says we already have, have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness, the minds. That means the Bible says you have forgiveness of sins. You don't lose your forgiveness because you sin unknowingly, inadvertently, by mistake, once in a while. You don't lose it. We have. Look at the next verse. Ephesians 1.11. In Him also we have we have obtained an inheritance. You already have it. Ephesians 1.6 By which He made us accepted in the Beloved. You already accepted. You already loved. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You're already sealed with the Holy Spirit. It's like chips in Uncle Chip's packet. It is sealed. See, you are already sealed in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 to 14. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. We are already qualified. Qualified us. He has qualified us. You are already qualified to partake of the inheritance of the saints. You are qualified for healing. You are qualified for provision. You are qualified for peace. You are qualified, hallelujah, to be used by God. You are qualified. Or if I fast for 40 days, I will be qualified. If I pray one hour, I'll be qualified. If I give 10,000, I will be qualified. We are trying to qualify ourselves when God has already qualified us. To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light, He has delivered us. From the power of darkness, conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. No Christian should ever fear any demonic power. No Christian should ever fear the devil. 
Why? Jesus said, it is finished. His power is finished. Hallelujah, look at that. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. We already have. 1 Peter 2, 24. Who Himself bore our sins in His own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. By His stripes, the wounds on His back, by His stripes, we were, past tense, healed. Healed. It's a word that refers to physical healing. As far as God is concerned, He's already healed you of every sickness. Cancer, TB, whatever it may be, He has healed you already. Alright? Galatians 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Redeemed. Past tense. Redeemed already from the curse of the law. Any curse that should have come upon you because you have broken God's law, you are already redeemed. The price has been paid. The price has been paid, meaning you don't have to be in mental disorder anymore. You don't have to be in panic attacks anymore. Come out of that place. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, raised us up together, past tense, made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. You are already raised with Christ. You are seated with Christ. That's your true position in Christ. So the question is this, do you need God to heal you today? Do you need God to bless you today? The truth is, you don't need Him to do that. You don't need Him to bless you. You don't need Him to heal you. He's already done it. He's already done it. He's already done his part. You already have it. It's yours. You already got it. See, regardless of your natural circumstances and the natural facts of life, the Bible says God has already done it. Whatever you need pertaining to life and godliness is already yours. It's connected to the statement, it is finished. Today you need knowledge. Knowledge of the finished work. Asking God to bless you when He has already blessed you is counterproductive. Asking God to heal you when He has already healed you is counterproductive. Two keys to understanding this is this. Difference between spirit, soul and body and past, present and future tense of faith. So you need to understand these two things. Turn first to John chapter 4 verse 24. The Bible says in verse 24, God is spirit. God is spirit. Those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. In other words, even faith is a part of worship. That means your faith must begin first in spirit before it begins in the natural. God is spirit. You know what that means? He will always move first in the spiritual realm. Not in your physical realm, not in your emotional realm, not in your life. He will not move first in your circumstance. He will always move first in the spiritual realm. The problem is that the spiritual realm we cannot see, we cannot feel, we cannot touch. Our senses cannot comprehend. We can only believe. When Jesus said, it is finished, it was an eternal work, an eternal sacrifice. That means every inheritance, every benefit of salvation that is given to us on salvation, on redemption, has come to us in our spirit account. Everything that God has done for you is in the spirit. It's already given, it's as real as the chair you are sitting on. More real than the clothes you are wearing. But salvation, the benefits of salvation is more real than the clothes you're wearing. It's already given to you. It's in the spirit. It's in your account. But it's in a spiritual place. You can't see it. Then how do I know? Well, the word tells you what's in your account. The Bible tells you what God has done for you. By faith, you believe in the word and you receive it, you believe in it, and then it manifests in the physical realm. This is how faith operates. God always moves first in the spirit. 
And then we see the results in the natural, in the physical, in the material world. Very important. Write it down if you can. Whether or not you see a physical manifestation of what God has already given you in the spiritual realm does not depend on God. It depends on you. Whether or not you see a physical manifestation of what God has already given you in Christ does not depend on God anymore. He has already done it. He's put it into your spirit account. Now it depends on you, your faith. In other words, as we say, the ball is in your court. But yet many Christians, instead of living in the finished reality of salvation, we just go through life accepting whatever comes our life. When we feel discouraged, when we feel hopeless, when we feel pain, when we feel depressed, we just accept it as if this is my lot in life. Instead of resisting it. By trusting in the work of God. We just accept whatever comes. Discouragement, we accept it. Depression, hopelessness, we accept it. And then we cry, Lord, please give me some love. Lord, please give me some joy. See, Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says, God has already poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. You already have love. God's already poured out His love to you. We are praying for peace, whereas Jesus says, I've given you peace. Are you seeing it? So you must see first. You already have an account. Use your imagination. In heaven, there's an account in your name. All the inheritance of Christ. All that is your benefit, your right, your privileges because of the death of Christ, the resurrected Christ, is in that account. And this is your passbook. This reveals to you what is in your account. So unless you read your passbook, how do you know what money is in your account? Many Christians never read the passbook, but they're always angry at God. God, why did you make me sick? God, why aren't you answering my prayers? God, we're blaming God for doing things He's never done. Hallelujah. The second thing to understand is this, the past, present, and future faith. Our faith has a past tense. We must release faith in what Christ has already done. Salvation is based on what Christ has done. We believe He died for my sins. We believe He buried, He was buried to experience death on my behalf. I believe He was risen from the dead. So my faith is in what has finished. We are already saved, already forgiven, already redeemed from every curse of the law. Joshua chapter 6 verse 2 and 3 again. Look at that. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given you, past tense, into your hand, Jericho, its king and the mighty man of valor, you shall march, present tense, around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do, present tense. Because I have given you, believe me, and march around the city. And then you will possess it in the future tense. So that's the past tense. God has already given to us in Christ. The present tense of faith is this. Mark 11 verse 24. Therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So Jesus says, when you pray, believe that you receive. When you pray, believe that you receive. This is present tense. Jesus is emphasizing the importance of believing at the time of prayer. Believing at the time of prayer. The same thing is told to us by John. This is the confidence that we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, we know healing is His will, provision is His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have. Present tense. You must believe you have when you pray. Present tense. There is a past tense. Jesus has done it. Jesus has healed us. Jesus has delivered us. Now, this is God's will. I ask for it by faith. And when I pray, I must believe present tense that I have what I ask for. You see, in the mind of God, because Jesus died for it, when you ask for it, in the mind of God, it's already yours. It's already yours. He's already given it to you. In the mind of God, it's already yours. We need to see from his perspective. See, in Joshua chapter 6, God tells Joshua, see, 
See, I have given. See, I have given. Many of us don't see. That's why we are wandering and wandering. But God said, see, look through my eyes. See from my perspective. See from the Spirit. I have given. We need to see from His perspective. So as far as God is concerned, He's already healed you. He's already blessed you. You have to see from His perspective and see that in His mind, He's already provided it. Whatever benefit of salvation you're believing for, whatever benefit of salvation, He says, you are to believe it belongs to you. The moment you pray, you are to believe you have it. See, faith has a present tense reality. In other words, you must believe you have. Peace is yours today. Healing is yours today. Biblical prosperity is yours today. Hallelujah. Deliverance is yours today. Strength is yours today. Don't be impatient. Don't question God. Be composed. Rest in the finished work of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must exercise your faith from the place of it is done rather than trying to use your faith to make God do something. And there's a future tense of faith. Mark 11, 24. Future tense. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Future tense. So we see in the Bible that Jesus has past tense healed us on the cross. He wants us to believe and pray. And the moment we pray, He wants us to believe that we have it. Present tense. And then He said, you will have it. Future tense. Can you say amen? Faith for anything includes past, present, and future tense. It's always connected to the cross. Always connected to the atonement. God has already redeemed us from fear, from sickness, from poverty, from guilt, every power of darkness. He's already done it. He has done it. He has done it. He's not going to do it again. So your begging and your crying is a waste of time. Now your present tense faith is believe He has done it and it's already yours. It's in your account. Believe it. And fight from that place where you believe it is done rather than fighting from a place where you're trying to get it done. It is easier to fight from victory than to fight for victory. It is easier to defend what you already have than to try to work hard to get something. And you have already been given an inheritance in Christ. You already have it. Your faith is to defend it, not to get God to give it to you again. It's Satan who's trying to come and steal your healing, steal your peace, steal your joy. It's not God. We use our faith against the enemy to preserve and protect what's already given to me by God. That means there is a fight to faith. The Israelites had to fight. They still had to fight. God says, I have given it to you, but they still had to go and fight their enemies. But they did not have to fight with all the might, strength, and power because God was fighting for them as they went. In the same way, you have to fight the fight of faith. You have to keep on believing because the moment you believe you have healing, your symptoms will come back sometimes. Your thoughts will disturb you. Your friends will tell you, look, your prayers are not being answered and all your physical circumstances will be a war of thoughts and feelings and impressions coming at you from the outside and from the inside, you have to keep on believing. Keep on trusting. And keep on speaking what you have in Christ. You see, the Bible says, good things are already in you. Already in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ, Christ is in you. In Christ, you already have all the blessings of salvation. In other words, God has already given you good things in Christ. You already have it. Don't look into your body. Don't look in your mind. Don't look into your souls. Don't look in your bank account. Look at Christ. Look at your spiritual account. Look at the Bible. You already have it. You already have those things in Christ. If you are a believer, you have it. Now the Bible says, acknowledge it. 
Acknowledge. When somebody gives you a new pair of shoes, you like to wear it. Wearing that new pair of shoes is acknowledging that you have it and acknowledging the giver. So the Bible is saying, whatever God has given to you in Christ, acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Speak it. Your faith will become effective. Your faith will become powerful. Your faith will become meaningful. Your faith will produce when you acknowledge what you have in Christ. Hallelujah. So instead of saying, Lord, where are you? Acknowledge, Father, I thank you that you are with me. Because he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. By faith, Father, I thank you that you love me. I feel dry. I feel terrible. I feel depressed. But I thank you that you love me. You're acknowledging what God has already given you in Christ. And when you acknowledge that, it changes things on the inside. It breaks the power of lies and darkness in your heart. Just begin to acknowledge what the Bible says you have. And then you will see it manifesting in your life. See, understand this. You do not need God to respond to you. You need to respond to God. Write it down. This is where we are missing it. We are trying to do things to get God to respond to us. If I go to church, He will respond to me. If I do good works, He will respond to me. No. He has already done everything in Christ. Amen. He has already healed you, blessed you, redeemed you, forgiven you in Christ. Now our part is to respond to His work, respond to His grace by saying, Father, I believe you died for my sins. I ask you for forgiveness and I thank you that I have it in Jesus' name. He's done the work. He has done it. Our part is only to respond to Him. See, we need to change our mindset when it comes to faith. We need to believe that this has already happened on the cross, past tense. We need to believe we have that present tense. And then we will see it. There is more that is going on than what you perceive with your eyes, with your senses, your feelings. There's a spirit world out there that is more real than the natural world. And the Bible tells us what is in a spiritual account. That God in Christ has declared it is finished to Jesus' death and burial. And that's when Jesus was resurrected. And that has become the foundation of our faith. That we believe from the finished work of Christ, we already have and then we will have it in our lives. You must relate to God the way He describes it in the Word. Rather than trying to get Him to relate to us our way. As far as He is concerned, it is done. I have to see now from His perspective. It's not a matter of trying to get God to move. It's a matter of me coming to agreement with what He said. Just agree with what He said even if it doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. Are you blessed today?